Hello art geeks, welcome back or welcome in general if this is your first time here. My name is Sofia and I'm here to tell you about books that you should read if you're interested in art and culture. This week's book is a little more specific in its scope. It's called Performance Art from Futurism to the Present and it's by Rosalie Goldberg. Now if you're at all familiar with the art world you probably have heard of Rosalie Goldberg because she has had a long and important career in contemporary art. Most people associate her with Performa, which is an organization dedicated to the study, the presentation and development of performance art. Goldberg first published this book in 1979 when performance art was, well, not exactly new, but it was becoming more visible than ever alongside conceptual art. So you may be asking, well, what exactly is performance art? It's a very open medium and because of that it's very hard to define, but in short it's live art made by artists. Let me elaborate a bit on this idea by using the author Words. Performance became accepted as a medium of artistic expression in its own right in the 1970s. At that time, conceptual art, which insisted on an art of ideas over products and on an art that could not be bought and sold, was in its heyday and performance was often a demonstration or an execution of those ideas. Performance thus became the most tangible art form of the period. Performance has been a way of appealing directly to a larger public, as well as shocking audiences into reassessing their own notions of art and its relation to culture. Conversely, public interest in the medium, especially in the 1980s, stems from an apparent desire of that public to gain access to the art world, to be a spectator of its ritual and its distinct community, and to be surprised by the unexpected, always a not unorthodox presentations that the artists devise. Sorry about the unorthodox? Yeah, I need to practice my English. Performance art is one of the wackiest parts of the art world. It produced the kind of artworks that either delight people or that people resort to when they want to illustrate the fact that modern art sucks. Let me give you a few well-known examples. You have Marina Abramovic, who explores the limits of her own body by, for example, in 1974's Rhythm 2, sitting in front of an audience and taking pills prescribed for catatonia, which gave her convulsions and, once the effects had worn off, taking a pill designed to calm down aggression, which caused her to black out. That same year, she did Rhythm 0, in which she invited the audience to use a myriad of objects on her in any way they wanted. The performance got more and more violent until it had to be stopped when an audience member aimed the gun at her head. Yoko Ono did something similar when she sat on the stage and let the audience cut her clothing while she sat passively. If you want more examples of performance artists such as Vito Conti or Joseph Beuys, I highly recommend a video on the Unlock Arts series by Tate, which I will link to in the description. As an aside, they have one video on surrealism that's presented by Peter Capaldi, so that is your chance to hear the doctor talking about art. I wanted to share some quotes from this book. It does a great job of illustrating the historical precedence for contemporary art, and I especially I actually love their description of the futurists. Futurists must teach all authors and performers to despise the audience, Marinetti insists. Applause merely indicated something mediocre, dull, regurgitated or too well digested. Booing assured the actor that the audience was alive, not simply blinded by intellectual intoxication. He suggested various tricks, designed to infuriate the audience, double booking the auditorium, coating the seats with glue, and he encouraged his friends to do whatever came to mind on stage. 
The book goes on to touch on the works of constructivists, Dada and the surrealists. I find that it becomes more interesting as we come closer to the present, so I will just jump to the 1960s and 1970s. The art object came to be considered entirely superfluous within this aesthetic, and the notion of conceptual art was formulated as an art of which the material is concepts. This regard for the art object was linked to its being seen as a mere pawn in the art market. If the function of the art object was to be an economic one, the argument went, then conceptual work could have no such use. Although economic necessities made this a short-lived dream, performance in this context became an extension of such an idea. Although visible, it was intangible, it left no traces and it could not be bought and sold. Finally, performance was seen as reducing the element of alienation between performer and viewer, something that fitted well into the often leftist inspiration of the investigation of the function of art, since both audience and performer experienced the work simultaneously. The book is a fairly short introduction, but it's great if you don't know anything about performance art. Let me know in the comments what you think about performance art. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you like to be part of it? I want to know. That is it for me this week. Tune in next time for another book.